Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Allen. I'm, uh, thank you for choosing LASIK Plus and me for your uh, laser vision correction procedure. What I'd like to do is go over what you're going to experience during the procedure as well as your post-operative uh, instructions. Now, first, it's normal for you to be nervous. Virtually everyone is to, to some degree, but it's not going to affect the outcome. Uh, a, mi a misunderstanding is that uh, you're going to be responsible for complex maneuvers. You better do things perfect. You're not going to have a good outcome. And that's simply not true. Uh, basically, the lasers and I fix the procedure. And you just try to relax, try not to move around. We just ask you don't move your head side to side and you don't squeeze your eyes tight. You just try to be as relaxed as, as you can and just let me and the lasers do our job. When patients are all done with the procedure, almost everyone sits up smiling. Very few thinks it was anywhere near as big a deal as they thought beforehand. Almost everyone just talks that it was a very strange experience. Now, before we even start the procedure, we're going to give you uh, the opportunity to take Valium. We'll be provided with a prescription. Um, we just ask that you wait until check-in is done and you've signed your consent form, but you can take it right uh, after check-in if you're real nervous. Some patients prefer to wait until after the procedure and they're just going to use it more of a sleeping pill. And then some patients say, I just don't, I don't think I need it. I don't like to take any uh, medications that I don't need to. So it's not, it's not an obligation. Um, in addition, before we start anything, we're going to talk, I'm going to go over everything in detail, what you're going to experience, what you're going to see and, and feel uh, and hear, and you're going to have a chance to have all your questions answered. And then while we do the procedure, I'm going to talk you through it. So there's not going to be uh, any surprises. And remember, you're really not involved very much in the procedure. Now, there's two steps to LASIK. And what we do first is create the flap. And we're using all laser LASIK. So the way we create the flap is the intralace laser creates a very precise bubble layer. So that's correct. It's just precise layer of bubbles is making your flap. To do that, we'll have one eye tape shot, uh, plenty of numbing drops in the eye that we're, we're doing the procedure on. And uh, we place a very soft ring on the white part of the eye. And briefly, you're going to feel a pressure sensation, not painful, but pressure. And what's very weird is the vision dims or goes completely dark. And I'll remind you before we, right before we do it, and you just try not to squeeze your lids tight. Now, it's natural you to be thinking, well, what if you cough? What if you sneeze? What if you squeeze? And uh, all that would happen is that the bubble pattern would be interrupted and we'd start over. We'd put the bubbles in again. You're not going to cause some terrible problems for us. Once we've done that in both eyes, then we'll move on to the part where we actually sculpt your cornea with an eczema laser and get rid of those glasses or contacts prescriptions. So for that part, we're going to have one eye tape shot. We'll have a smooth little eyelid holder separating your lids, and I'll have you looking up at a flashing light. Now remember, even though I asked that you look at the light, that isn't determining where the treatment spots are going. The tracking systems of these advanced lasers are guiding where the treatment spots go. If you got disoriented and you looked away from the light or you couldn't see it anymore, the tracker is just going to shut the treatment off. So again, you do the best you can uh, to follow my instructions. Um, but you're, you're not a, a big part of the procedure. Now, when we finish the procedure, we're going to take a little look at a microscope and um, in the, the laser suite, your vision's going to be very blurry. Patients have huge prescriptions. Perhaps say you haven't seen a clock in 40 years, still get very emotional. Even though everyone's cornea is swollen and everyone's vision's foggy, they perceive it as clearer than it's been in 40 years and they often get quite emotional. However, if you have a more normal prescription, you're not going to be impressed when you set up. You're just going to go like, well, it's, it's really blurry. Well, because it is. And then every hour that swelling is going to get better. And later in the evening, you'll be fine for watching television. Usually the next day, um, you're doing very well. Uh, now, when you finish, we're going to have put in all your prescription drops. So you're not going to need to put any in for about five hours. Uh, as far as the uh, how the eyes are going to feel after the procedure, initially you're fine because the numbing drops are still working. But as you head home after about 15 or 20 minutes, the numbing is going to wear off. And then the eyes get very uncomfortable for 
several hours. You Normally, the eyes are going to be scratchy and burny and watering, and it's natural for you to want to squeeze them and you want to rub them and dab them, but you can't do any of that. Now, in the center, before you go, I'm going to put um, sunglasses on you, and I want you just to keep those uh, in position all the way till you get home and, and you put the goggles on then to go to sleep. So I don't want you lifting up the sunglasses to be dabbing anywhere near your lids because the key thing is just stay away from the eyes. So just keep the eyes closed uh, gently. Try not to squeeze. Stay away from them. Now, when you get home, we want you to go right to bed. Uh, you might have the question, well, what if I'm just laying there and, and I can't get to sleep? Um, you can take any medication that you want at home to help you sleep, but once in a while, patients are just going to be uh, excited and they just can't get to sleep right away. Uh, just try to relax because after one and a half, two hours, most of the time you're going to start transitioning from that burny, scratchy feeling uh, to more of a, a lash in the eye or a foreign body sensation for the next three hours or so. Most patients need about five hours till you're feeling well and and you can function normally. Even then, after the five hours, remember, it's very rare for things to be symmetric. In other words, one eye is going to see different and feel different and look different than the other one. That is far more common than everything being symmetric. So most patients are going to have more swelling in one eye than the other, and therefore the vision is going to be a little blurrier that first night. When one eye feels normal, almost everybody has the other eye still feel a little scratchy for a couple more hours. And you can put as many teardrops as, as you want then to help with that residual irritation. Most patients are going to have some little red blotches on the white part of the eye. That's nothing to worry about. They always go away. And they're like uh, tiny micro bruises. And... Um, but almost everyone's going to have more of those in one eye than the other. So again, don't let any, any of that bother you. Uh, if you feel comfortable with it, you're fine watching TV or checking emails, or even if you want to, uh, to go out for a late dinner. Uh, but I think the big thing the first day is just don't rub the eyes. Stay away from them. Now I'm going to talk about your eye drops. Uh, there's three drops, uh, prescription drops, that I'm going to ask you to take. And they're all used four times a day. So ideally for the first week, you're taking a breakfast, lunch, dinner, and bedtime. It doesn't matter the order of the drops. Uh, we just ask that you wait about three minutes in between the drops. So be careful not to have the drops touch your cornea. Um, on the other hand, the drops themselves don't have to hit the eye, uh, the cornea proper. As long as they get inside the lid, they're fine. Now, you'll be receiving two antibiotic drops. Uh, common ones are ciprofloxacin and tobramycin, but you might receive different drops. We take a look at your allergies, your sensitivities, and then sometimes there's other clinical considerations where we may want to switch the drops around. So uh, the staff will go over those and make sure that you're straight and which ones are the antibiotics. Um, the third drop is prednisolone acetate. That's an anti-inflammatory drop, a steroid drop. And again, you're going to take that four times a day with one exception. We want a lot of those drops going in early in the process. So if you had a morning surgery, the day of your procedure, we're going to have you take the prednisolone acetate drop every hour while you're awake. So you'll go home, you'll take your nap. When you get up after five hours, you're going to just be putting that drop in about every hour. Now you'll notice with that drop, it's sort of a milky white drop. It's a suspension and you have to shake it up. Every time you use it, shake it very well. What if you have an afternoon surgery? Well, then it's different. Then we're going to have you take uh, that prednisolone acetate the next day, your first post-operative day, every hour. So uh, overall, the drops are four times a day with the exception of the prednisolone. Now, as far as how often are you going to be able to get in the antibiotic drops uh, the day of your procedure, again, it depends on when you had it. If you had a morning surgery, you're probably going to be able to get them in two or three doses. Um, on the other hand, if you had an afternoon or early evening surgery, you're probably going to get in one to two doses. So don't get worried about how many drops you get in. Sometimes uh, patients will finish in the early evening. We always put in uh, a full round of your prescription drops at the end of the procedure. Some patients that are having it later may sleep till morning or if they get up in the middle of the night, they'll put a round in. So again, the first day, the most important thing is to, to not be rubbing your eyes. And I think that 
another helpful drop is artificial tears. Although it's not a medication, it's going to help you with your comfort. It's not going to help during those five hours. That you just need to be down and with your eyes closed gently, not squeezing, not rubbing. But when you get up, uh, for any foreign body sensation, you can put those in as often as you like. And even for the first month, they really help you with comfort. And so I would put the artificial tears in uh, four times a day for the whole first month, as long as your eyes are feeling good. Vision tends to fluctuate uh, during the first month. And so anything that's fluctuating is usually related to dryness and the artificial tears will be helpful. So if you have intermittent blurring or intermittent halos, or it feels like something's in the eye, or even if the eyes are welling up with tears in response to dryness, um, just use more of the teardrops. Now, as far as the sunglasses, I'm going to give them to you to uh, wear on the way home, primarily for protection, so you don't, as a reflex, get up and rub your eyes, and then you're going to put the goggles on. Um, ideally, um, you'll be wearing those quite often when you're outside. You don't have to. There are patients say, I just don't like sunglasses. Well, then after the first day, you don't have to. But I think it's always a good idea to prevent the ultraviolet light from getting in uh, when you're outside. Now, the goggles, I definitely want you wearing the night of surgery. It's just when your eyes are feeling scratchy, it's just normal to want to reach up and touch them. After that, we let you use your own judgment because there are some patients where the goggles annoy them so much that they're more likely to rub their eyes by having the goggles on. Um, I think another issue is people have a lot of, of frequently asked questions um, about uh, when they can do certain activities. And so one is, well, when can I return to work? And usually the next day, it's in fact, it's unusual after LASIK that you're not going to be able to, to work the next day. You know, if you're in a job where uh, you might have foreign objects flying in your eyes, of course you want to wear protective eyewear. If you do get something in your eye, you can't get up there and rub them. Uh, you can either use your drops or use some eye wash to try to rinse them out. And otherwise, you'd have to have uh, one of us doctors at LASIK Plus or an emergency room doctor remove something that, that got in your eye. But you can't rub your eyes. And uh, when can you start driving? Again, usually the next day. The day of surgery, you're going to be very foggy and blurry, and so we don't want you driving the day of surgery. But the next day, the vast majority of people are going to be fine driving in the morning and even driving the next night. Uh, what about riding a motorcycle? Um, you can ride a motorcycle the next day, but we want you either wearing a helmet or, or good protective goggles. When can you wear makeup? Ideally, we don't want you wearing makeup for a week. And it's primarily because we're just worried how you're going to take it off and that you're going to rub against the eye. We really want to leave the eye alone. And rubbing eyes long term is never good. So it's always better, even if you're doing makeup, to pull your lid away from the eye and then remove it from your lid. Uh, another question is, well, what about little red marks? Now, not every patient has little red dots or blotches after the procedure, but the vast majority of them do. Um, and they always go away. They're not of any concern. Little tiny pinpoint ones might go away in a few days. But if you've got a bigger uh, blotch, it might take a few weeks away. You don't have to limit your activities. And uh, it's not serious. And when can you rub your eyes? And as I mentioned with the wake up, uh, the makeup question, uh, it's never good to rub your eyes. But as far as gentle touching and rubbing, we want you definitely to wait uh, a full week. And when can you get water in the eye? Well, you can shower the next day and wash your hair, but we don't want water in the eye. So when you're showering, just have your eyes closed because we definitely don't want any soap or shampoo. And early on, if you're rubbing your eye, it's possible that you could wrinkle or move that flap. Um, another common question is, well, does LASIK hurt? Does the procedure itself hurt? And the answer is, uh, no, not normally. Once in a very, very great while, someone will complain of that the pressure was, was very uncomfortable, but that's unusual. Most people will just talk about the pressure as being um, a brief discomfort, um, but not painful. And uh, can you read or watch TV the night of the procedure? Absolutely, but just remember, um, depending on when you have your procedure, um, it, it might get quite late by the time that you're feeling normal. So again, usually you need about five hours before you're functioning functioning fairly clearly. And so if you had an early evening procedure, that could be quite late. But it's not going to hurt to try to 
uh, text or do emails or, or watch television or go to a late dinner? Uh, when can you mow their lawn or garden? Again, I think after your uh, first post-operative check, so we just made sure that you're healing normally, and then we'd want you to wear some protective uh, goggles. And uh, that leads us right into when can you exercise? And again, um, we don't want water in the eye, so stay out of pools and hot tubs for a week, but you can work out the next day. But just use common sense. You really want to protect your eyes. If you're doing anything where you might get a hand in your eye or a ball hitting your eye, then you got to wear some protective eyewear. But if you're just out for a run or at the health club, you can work out the next day. And when can you use a tanning bed? Well, you know, I'd say wait a few days, but then again, whenever you tan, it's best to have protective eyewear on and keep your eyes closed. That's the safest thing for your eyes. And uh, when can you go swimming? It's just like when can you get water in the eye? We want you to make sure that you wait uh, at least a week. We really want to make sure that um, you're not at a higher risk for getting any infection in there. And I think as far as scuba diving, I think, you know, wait a few weeks, but you should be fine as far as going scuba diving. When can you uh, travel on an airplane? Well, traveling on an airplane itself isn't going to affect your LASIK procedure. You know, the airline is, is very uh, uh, dry, so you're going to want to take more of your teardrops. But we just want to make sure you're around for your post-op visit, and if you're traveling somewhere, there'd be some continuity of care if you did uh, run into a problem. And uh, how long will I have glare and halos? Now, right after your procedure, the night of the procedure, you've got a lot of swelling in your cornea. So if you're out for dinner, you'll see amazing light show. Don't let that frighten you. Your eyes aren't going to stay like that. By the next day, normally you can drive in the morning. You can drive at night. If you have a small prescription, halos aren't going to last very long. They may dissipate completely within a few weeks. If you've got a very large prescription, you're probably going to have some extra haloing, that soft glow around headlights, maybe even four to six months before it starts to fade. But remember this, at one year, the chance of more halos than you have now is only about 1%, and then usually mild. So long-term nighttime vision problems is not normal with uh, modern-day LASIK. And then the last topic I want to touch on is monovision. Now, if you uh, signed up and you want both eyes corrected for the distance, and that's probably what the majority of patients do, uh, just ignore this discussion. But uh, for some of us older patients, um, that have lost the ability to read up close and don't want to be fully dependent on readers, there's an option called monovision, where one eye, usually the dominant eye, is corrected for distance and the non-dominant eye for near. And there's advantages and disadvantages. Um, usually, uh, if your distance eye is right on, uh, people, the vast majority of activities, will not need glasses for anything. However, if you're going to be looking at very small print, say a phone book, or stock quotes, or a lot of reading in dim light, you may still need to use reading glasses for those things. And maybe 5% of patients, even if they have perfect distance correction, they just prefer when they drive at night or in a rainstorm or a snowstorm, they may still want some distance correction. So it doesn't mean perfect vision under all circumstances, but it allows you to function at distance and near the vast majority of the time. And one thing, though, is it requires your brain to rewire the system. So normally, uh, the first couple weeks, patients, most patients are you know, rather uncomfortable with it. They, it just feels strange, and they're sort of tempted to close the reading eye to look in the distance and close the distance eye to read. If you do that, you'll never get used to it. So you sort of just have to put up with the strangeness, and that forces your brain to rewire the system. Um, the vast majority of people by a month are feeling comfortable that this is going to work out, although it may take a few months before they're fully adapted to monovision. Now, if you say, well, what if I try it and I don't like it? Well, then at three months, we can do a retreatment and just add a few more seconds of laser and get rid of the reading eye and make it a distance eye, but then you, you would certainly need the uh, reading glasses. Now, uh, hopefully these questions uh, that you've had have, have been answered somewhat with this discussion. But remember, before the procedure, we're going to talk again. I'm going to go over everything in detail you're going to experience. And any questions you still have, I'm going to take care of. So I'm going to take great care of you, and you're going to get the vision that you deserve.